Good day and welcome to Walshville Christian Church's April 5th service, Sunday, April 5th. And I'm glad that you're able to join us this, this day. And if you're joining us, I hope that you also just joined us with our church chat, which was scheduled for a half an hour before this message. And that's something that we're going to continue doing. As, as is obvious, we are still sequestered. We're still locked in, um, sheltering in place. And it looks like that's going to go for a little time yet. Um, today, April 5th, will be it's palm sunday where we're actually recording the day before but april 5th is palm sunday and the following week is easter sunday it looks like we will still be virtual on easter sunday and while that's not ideal we will still plan to meet virtually at seven o'clock in the morning with a service and then following the service we plan to have the church chat open for an hour to an hour and a half afterwards for if you want to just get your beverage together and just kind of hang out together on Easter Sunday. Um, that's kind of what we're going to go through. Monday morning or Monday evening, we're scheduled to have a Camp Mac board meeting. Camp Mac board meeting, I'm not sure the status of. I'm going to be making some calls to see if we're still having it. If we do have it, it will be virtual, uh, probably a Zoom meeting. I do not have the details, but that's kind of what's on the schedule. <clears throat> Beyond that, I can't tell you what's going on. I do know that we have, we've planned to cancel the Guatemala trip, and I believe that we're going to get a refund on that. And then sometime in the future, we will uh, get together and reapply um, or re re reschedule a trip, uh, Lord willing. So that's, that's all we have. In the way of announcements this oh also there have been some people asking about tithing um, since we're virtual it's not it's not easy to tithe to the church to do your giving <clears throat> and I thank those who have offered and those who have, have sent in their tithe if you're interested and, and you can still tithe uh, via mail but if, if you are wanting to give and you're having difficulties, just contact one of the elders and they can help you figure out how to, how to give your tithe. But in all things, the church is doing well. God has blessed us and the lights are still on, as you can tell. So praise the Lord. He is good. And we're going to go ahead and sing our first song, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. And that's on page 337. So please join us. The words will appear on the screen as we sing.
praise the Lord Almighty. He is great and good and wonderful, and it's good that we can meet virtually in the midst of this pandemic. Our call to worship this morning is Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 is going to be on your screen, and please read with me as I read Isaiah 55. <clears throat> Come, all you who are thirsty, Come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you, have, you will summon nations you not, know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and let and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. For this will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. Amen. Will you please join me as we pray in, 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 in the opening of this, set, of this service? Lord, as we gather this morning, as we gather each of us in our own homes, as we gather remotely, we come together as your church. We come as your people on this day, fervently desiring to, to, to be united in one and you tell us that your spirit lives in each of us those of us who have become transformed that have bowed to to your grace and accepted the free gift of eternal life you tell us that we have been made new that your spirit comes in and and, and sets up resonance in us and that we now are united by that spirit. And so this morning, Lord, we thank you that we have this opportunity to come and sing praises together as one voice before you. And as we lift our voice, as we lift our voices, each of us from our own house, may you be glorified and may the sound be pleasing to your ears, Lord, because we come humbly before you and we thank you for, for being the great God. Lord, we're in the midst of this uh, this coronavirus. We're in the midst of people suffering. We're in the midst of people dying. We're in the midst of people being locked away from one another. And yet you are God and you are working your plan through your story. And we thank you that we have the ability to be part of it. I pray that you will give us strength to continue to do that. But right now, Lord, I pray that our worship and our songs will be pleasing to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so what we're going to do is go ahead and have three more praise songs, and then we're going to do the Lord's Prayer together. And so hopefully you all still remember the Lord's Prayer. It's been a couple weeks since we've met together, but we plan to do the Lord's Prayer. Our next song is page 338, 
page 338, which is just the very next page, and that is we sing the greatness of our God. By the way, I just want to let you guys know, continue to pray for me. You know, when we meet together, it's so much easier for me to do a message and to, to kind of conduct services because I get to see everyone. If I say something stupid, somebody's there quick to let me know, and so I can correct it. But here, virtually, it's so much more difficult. So just pray that God will give me the strength and wisdom to continue on with these and that he's glorified as we do that and that, that his word will just, as he says in, his, in, in the call to worship, that it will go and will not be fruitless, that it will accomplish what, it is, what he intends it to accomplish. Let's uh, sing together. We sing the greatness of our God. Page 338 in our hymnals. go straight into page 466 page 466 and page 466 is page 466 almost there all right and it's on the screen so you probably already know it's what a friend we have in Jesus and by the way Jesus is our friend, our Savior, and our Lord. But as I ask for prayers for myself, also prayers for Benjamin as he is doing the service, he's doing the production of this. And so there's a lot of pressure on him as he goes through it. But, um, you know, praise the Lord. We, I'm sure we'll get through it. Page 466. <clears throat>
next song is page 454. 454, we'll go straight into that. The graphic will stay on the screen. Trust and obey, page 454. We'll sing all four verses. Good morning. It's great to be here and great to be singing praises to him. I hope you enjoyed singing together. <clears throat> um, right now we'll go ahead and go into the Lord's Prayer, um, something we do every Sunday after we have communion. And as I said, hopefully next Sunday each of you will be able to partake communion with us. But let's go ahead <clears throat> and say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. So we're going to close the service with... Uh, singing page 92 the solid rock and, and just to let you know if you want to hold that in readiness but the screen should have the words on it and today as i said is palm sunday and 
Palm Sunday, I think, is very significant for us, and I want to make sure that this message, uh, you know, as I've been researching and just studying, making sure we had an appropriate message because we're still all inside of this coronavirus quarantine, so to speak, this self-sheltering, uh, uh, sheltering in place and being locked away from one another. I guess quarantine applies only to those who are, are sick or think they may be sick with the virus, but never, nevertheless, we're all stuck and away from one another. I'd like to open by just reading three of the four gospel accounts of the Palm Sunday account. All four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, records the gospel account. I'm going to leave out Mark, but for no special purpose, Mark's and Luke's are, are very similar, although there's, uh, there's differences in each of them. But I'd like to read them so that we have a foundation of what we're talking about. I'll begin in John, and then go to Luke, and then go to Matthew. In, in John 12, verses 12 through 19, it reads, The next day, the great crowd that had come from the, from, for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on the donkey's colt. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb was raised and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this, this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. That is the, 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 the account in John. And remember, John's account, by most scholars, is written about 30 years after the other gospel accounts. And so John's account is kind of like the jewel by the inspired Holy Spirit of, of this Palm Sunday account. Luke, let's go to him, in Luke 19, verses 11 through 44, it reads, After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, they asked, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put it on Jesus, or put Jesus on it, as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in, in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus replied, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground you and the children within your walls, they will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. And then in Matthew chapter 21, this is a Matthew account. <clears throat> As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, uh, on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter, sorry, say to daughter Zion, see your king has comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. The very, a very large crowd spread, spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee. All right, so that was a lot of reading there of scripture, but those are three of the four accounts. And as you could tell, as we read through it, there's a lot of similar, similar activities going on, like accounts in each one of these, but each of them seem to have a little variation on what's being told. And all of them kind of create and, and paint a picture or a portrait of what was going on that day. And I th think the portrait that we see here is very important to us because this is Jesus entering Jerusalem on the final week of his life before he faces the cross. We know that Jesus freely went to Jerusalem and he freely laid down his life on that week. And he did that for us. He did that because of his great love and mercy. And so I want to look at some of the events and some of the things that have gone on there and kind of go back and apply them. I also heard an a interesting sermon this week from a radio preacher, and he said something in, uh, about one of the actions in this account that I really never thought of before, and so I, I really enjoyed hearing that. Um, okay. I'm not sure what the tone was for, but we'll continue on. So, the first I have basically four points that I want to make here. The first point is the palm branches. On Palm Sunday, it gets its name from the palm branches that the people waved. It's named Palm Sunday because the crowd gathered and cut palm branches from the tr trees that were around them. And they waved them in the air as Jesus passed, and they also laid them on the road before he came by and as he rode into the city. The palm branch basically represented goodness and victory. To the crowd of people that were there, they wanted a savior that would rescue them from their current situation. And what was their current situation? Their current situation was that they were being occupied and ruled by the Romans. They saw the Romans as a scourge, as a virus, as an oppressor that they needed to get rid of, and they were looking for a savior. The people were united in that. They wanted a savior. They wanted to be free from, <coughs> pardon me, from, from Roman rule and occupation. I say the people were united. There were some that liked the Roman rule, but for the most of them, they, 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 they saw that this Roman occupation and Roman rule as a very bad thing, um, which had very grave and dire consequences for many of the Israelites. Yet the palm branches were symbolic in this case of the final victory that Jesus would soon fulfill over death because Jesus was going to face the cross and he was going to have victory over it as it is written in 1 Corinthians or yeah, in 1 Corinthians 15:55 it reads, "O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The second, the second thing that I see here, the palm branches being number one, the second is him riding on the donkey. And what's important here is that we can believe God's word and we can trust God's grace. Remember that song, Sweet Hour of Prayer? That's a that, that, that line appears in that song, and it's from his word, but we can believe his word and trust his grace. And this is one of the reasons we can do that. Jesus riding on the donkey. Um, 
Jesus, if you look at that whole scenario, there are some people that as they read this, they don't believe or they believe that Jesus used some kind of div divine inspiration to figure out where a donkey was that he could use. Um, others think he used some kind of divine um, intervention, so to speak, to get the owner to let him have it when his disciples went to take it. But you know, if someone challenged them. So the question is, was this pre-planned, this event of get, gathering the donkeys, or was it divine knowledge? Was it pre-planned or was it divine um, in, 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 inter, intercession that, 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 we, that we're looking at here? The radio preacher that I heard recently, um, he threw out something I never really thought about before, but as we look at all the gospel accounts of Jesus, and we look at all of his modes of transportation, it seemed like, for the most part, Jesus walked everywhere he went, even across the lake sometimes, right? At least once. Jesus walked. He did take boats when he crossed the lakes, but he, his method of transportation recorded for us is walking. We never see him taking a chariot. We never see him riding on horses or donkeys. Um, his, his mode was walking. And so this incident here, which all four of the gospel writers record, seems very significant. It seems very intentional on Jesus' part that he is going to ride a donkey as he enters Jerusalem on this final trip, as he comes and announces himself, at, so as it were, to the world, because this is exactly what Jesus is doing. And as I read it, it looks very pre-planned. When Jesus tells his disciples to go get a donkey, to go get the colt, there was nothing there that was ambiguous. It seemed as though this was pre-planned, that arrangements had been pre-made for the disciples to get this donkey. It could be, as, you, as you listen to the story unfold, he says, go into the town. As you come into the town, look over here on the right, and you'll see the donkey and, 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 and her colt tied together. I want you to go over there and, as you, and untie them and bring them to me. And as you untie them and bring them to me, if the owner stops you, just give him this word, the Lord needs it, and they will give it to you, and, and you can bring him back. It all seems pre-planned, but it doesn't matter whether it was divine inspiration, divine intervention, or whether it was pre-planned. Either way, accomplish the same fact. Jesus purposefully picked the donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey to ride on to fulfill prophecy. He was purposeful about doing it. Um, see, in biblical, in biblical times, it was common for important people and kings to arrive by, uh, by, by a procession, in a procession by riding on a donkey. Um, the donkey symbolized peace. So those who, who chose to ride um, them chose to show that they were coming with peaceful intentions. And so Jesus, riding on a donkey, fulfilled prophecy, but also showed us that he was coming to make peace with mankind. And as, we, as he wept in the city, we see later, you know, what, what he says to them, if only you had known what, what would bring you peace. You see, brothers and sisters, we are at war with God. We were at war with God when we were in our sinful state. And it's not that we're not sinful now, but we have been forgiven. We have accepted his gift, but we were at war. We rebelled against him, and people are still rebelling against him. And what we need is a peace that he offered. By riding in the foal of a donkey, Jesus reminds us that he is the Prince of Peace. And also, more importantly, that, God's will, um, that God will fulfill his word. It was a direct fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. In Zechariah 9.9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah 9.9. 9. 
That is a, an amazing prophecy as, as you look at that. But he is righteous and having salvation. He was bringing to them the salvation that they desperately needed. He was coming in peace as a prince of peace. And he was coming to make sure that the word of God was fulfilled and true. See, we can trust God. We can believe his word and we can trust his grace. Amen. Isn't that great? Say amen. 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 So number one, the palm branches. Number two, riding on a donkey. Number three, the people shouting Hosanna. This is a, a really special part of it as well. When the people were shouting Hosanna, they were hailing Jesus Christ as king of Israel. They, the, Hosanna actually means save now, which is ironic, save now. In the people's mind, they wanted and they waited and they desired an earthly king. They wanted someone that was going to boot out Rome. They were, they were long awaiting, waited, they were long awaiting for this to occur. And here come Jesus, it comes Jesus and they're shouting, Hosanna! Save us! And they were proclaiming him king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Psalm 118, 26 is blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. See, what the problem is, is our Lord's ways are not our ways. Okay? Jesus was bringing true salvation. The people were shouting, Hosanna! They were shouting, save us now! And Jesus was coming and bringing true salvation. He was bringing what they needed, not what they were asking for. Although they were both were talking about salvation. Psalm 118, 26 says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He was going to bring sal true salvation to all who would trust in him. And in Romans, in Romans 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Jesus is the author of salvation. He is the Prince of Peace. And he came to bring that true salvation to all who would trust in him, to his children. We are the crown jewel of his creation. And he has been working his history to this climatic point where he was going to come and redeem mankind. The fourth and final point that I want to make here on this Palm Sunday is that not only did, did we have the palm branches and the symbolism there, not only did we have them riding on the donkey and the symbolism there, not only did we have the shouting of the people shouting Hosanna, hailing King Jesus as he, as he comes into town, but also we have Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. You see, the people were hailing him, but within a few days, they were going to be nailing him to the cross. Hail him or nail him. Jesus was aware that these same people that were hailing him were going to reject him and, and crucify him in just a few short days. He, he was the only one, only one truly aware of their need for a savior. What they thought they needed was not was not, not what they were asking for or what they needed. Jesus was acutely aware of that. As he approached Jerusalem and he saw the city, he wept over it and he said that if you'd only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden for, from you forever. It's hidden from your eyes. That peace in Luke. So I want to conclude with this way. Remember our call to worship, part of our call to worship, Isaiah 58 and, um, 55 verses 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. We may not understand it, but we can trust it. We, we, we can't fully understand God's, God's mind. We don't understand fully his way. We only understand what he reveals to us. And sometimes we really miss the boat on that. But we can trust 
him. We can believe his word and we can trust his grace because he is a faithful God. Jesus proves over and over he fulfilled every prophecy. Palm Sunday reminds us that the reign of Christ is far greater than the mind of, mind of man could ever conceive or plan, right? The Israelites were looking for a savior that would set them free from the Roman occupation and oppression and rule. And we can look at the Israelites and think to ourselves, what's wrong with you? You have Emmanuel. You have God with us, with you. Face to face, you have the creator of the world, the Savior in your presence. He is offering you eternal life, peace, and happiness. He's offering you his love, his mercy, and his grace. And yet, you're saying, eh, I'd rather have someone kick Roman at, the Romans out. You know, we can look at them and, and, and say, what is wrong with you? And we can shake our head in judgment and look at them with condescension. But we need to remember two things. Two things are very important. Number one, we have hindsight. And hindsight is 2020. And by that, I mean hindsight is looking back at, at, at an event that's already transpired. And 2020 refers to vision, 2020 vision. 2020 vision is what they call normal vision, although most laymen use 2020 vision to be perfect vision. So 2020 just means at 20 feet, you'll see things with a normal clarity. Um, 2100 vision means that you have to be 20 feet away from something to see it as clear as someone that's 100 feet away. So 2020, hindsight is 2020, and by that, I mean, we have the Gospels. We know how it turns out, okay? We, we, we have the events of Jesus' life and ministry, and we are amazed, and our faith is strengthened as, as we see Jesus demonstrate his power and his authority over weather and over physics. We see him d demonstrate his power and authority over temptation and over demons and evil spirits, and we see him demonstrate his power and his authority over death itself. As he claims to be God in the flesh, the Emmanuel or God with us, we understand that claim now, and we believe that claim. And so we have hindsight, right? But here's the important thing, number two. Number one, we have hindsight, but number two, we do the same thing. We do the same thing that they did 2,000 years ago. They had the Savior of the world coming in and offering them so much more than what, what was in their mind. And they were looking for someone to kick the Roman bullies out. As a society, it seems like we're looking to, it, it, society around us is looking for someone to fight our battle, someone to save us from our current occupier and oppressor. We want someone to save us from this pandemic that is called the coronavirus. And if you, and, and the society seems to be running after that. There seems to be fear and there seems to be, you know, frustration and they just want this to be over. And we want someone to come in and take care of that. If you can't say amen to that, you got to say ouch. Because God is so much bigger than that. Society is looking for temp a temporary savior for the latest issue of the day when it needs the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when it needs the Prince of Peace. Society needs a savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. The world needs Jesus. You see, God had an ultimate plan of sending his son to fight the final battle over death. And he had victory over death. And that is what we celebrate this week. It's Palm Sunday is the culmination of him sending his son to have that final victory over death. Because of Christ's ultimate sacrifice, we can be set free from death. 
Our sins will be washed clean, wiped clear. The slate doesn't exist anymore because of his sacrifice. In John eleven twenty five, 25, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. <clears throat> he who believes in me will live even if he dies. So as we go through Palm Sunday, as we are, are isolated, alone, not able to meet with our friends and families, um, not even e e able to meet for Easter Sunday, let's focus on worshiping the Lord and thanking him for that gift, that great gift that he has given us eternal life when we didn't deserve it, the great gift of his sacrifice, and let's celebrate the power of his resurrection because next Sunday we will be celebrating the power of his resurrection, that he conquered death, then the new life found in him is found in him alone. In 2 Corinthians 9, 15, it says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. God is an awesome God. We can believe his word and we can trust his grace because he is an awesome God. Let's pray and then we'll close with a song. <clears throat> Lord, I, I'm so thankful that we've had this opportunity to hear your word, to come and just together on this virtual environment, but come together and hear your word. And as, as we read in the opening, your word does not return to you void. That when you send your word, it will accomplish what you send it for. And Lord, I pray that your word will strengthen us, will help us to see that you are continuing to work your plan in, in your history and that, or in your story, which is his story, right? And we trust that you're working it that there's, there's a reason and methods and that you are in control. And while we may not understand it, we trust you. And we just ask, use us, Lord, help us. Give us the direction we need to go so that we can continue to find meaning and purpose in the midst of this pandemic. And Lord, we thank you because you are the great and awesome I am, Emmanuel. God with us. And so this day, I just ask right now that your hand of blessing will be upon each person as they watch this with me, that they will feel your presence, that you will strengthen them and give them courage so that they can do the things that you call them to do, even from their self-isolation. And should you call us to be not isolated, that we can trust you to watch our back, to be our refuge and our shelter as we go out into the world and not be afraid of this coronavirus because you are bigger than that in all things, Lord. We trust you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening, and now we're going to sing page 92 of Solid Rock, or the Solid Rock, and join with me as we do that.
Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, and I hope you're able to come back next Sunday morning at 7 o'clock for our service, Easter Sunday service, and also after that at 8 o'clock, we plan to have the church chat, and we also plan to have that Wednesday night service at 6.30 to 7.30, I think we're going to do. 6.30 to 7.30 is what we're going to land on. So 6.30 to 7.30, we will have uh, the Zoom session open. It will always be the same ID that we've been using. So whatever ID we use tomorrow, same ID for, for Wednesday and every Sunday and Wednesday after that, unless something should change. So Lord willing, that will be what we do. May you guys have a great week, and may the Lord's peace and Mercy be upon you as you go and be his hands and feet while we're doing this, this stay at home, shelter in place. In his name we pray. Amen.